This fellow might be in his time a great buyer of land with his statutes, his recognizances, his fines, <sighs> his double vouchers, his recoveries. Is this the fine of his fines and the recovery of his recoveries? To have his fine paint full of fine dirt. Will his vouchers vouch him no more of his purchases? And his double ones too. Then the length and breadth of a pair of adventures. The very conveyances of his lands will hardly lie in this box. And must the inheritor himself have no more, ha? Huh? And not a jot more, my lord. Is not parchment made of sheepskin? Aye, my lord, and no costumes too. There are sheep and cats which take assurance in that. I will speak to this fellow. Whose grave is this, Sirach? Mine, sir. Will a pit of clay for me be made, for such a guest as meet? I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. You I am, sir, and therefore it is not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, yet it is mine. Thou dost lie in it, too, to be in it, and to say it is thine. Tis for the dead, not the quick. Tis and therefore thou liest. Tis a quick lie, sir. Go away again from me to you. What man dost thou dig it for? For no man, sir. For what woman, then? For none, neither. Who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul is now dead. How absolute the name is. We must speak by the card, or equivocation will undo us. By the Lord, Horatio, this three years I have taken note of it. The edge has grown so pitched that the toe of the peasant comes so near the heel of the courtier, he gows his cod. How long hast thou been a grave maker? Of all the days I the year, I came to that day our last King Hamlet overcame Fortinbras. Huh, how long is that since? Cannot you tell that? Every folk can tell that. It was that very day the young Hamlet was born. He led his mad and sent to England. I Mary, when was that? Why, because he was mad, he shall recover his wits there, or if he does not, there's no great matter there. Why? So not be seen in him there. There the men are as mad as he. How came he mad? Very strangely, they said. How strangely? Thinking of losing his wit. Upon what ground? Were I here in Denmark, I have been sent here a man and boy thirty years. How long will a man lie here ere he rots? Faith, if he be not rotten before he die, as we have many pocky courses nowadays that will scarce hold the laying in, he will last you some eight years or nine. A tanner will last you nine years. Why he more than another? Why, sir, his hide is so tan with his trade that he will keep out water a great while, and your water is restored to care of your poor son's dead body. Here's his skull now, has I in you, the eight, three to twenty years. Whose was it? A horse of mad fellows, it was. Who do you think it was? Nay, I know not. A pestilence on him for a mad road. He poured a flag and a vanish on my head once. The same sculptor was, sir, York School of the King's Chester. This? In that. Let me see. Alas, poor York. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He has borne me on his back a thousand times. And now how abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your guides now, your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment, that were not, that were wont to set the table on a roar? No one now to mock your own garnering. Quite chapfallen? Now get you to my lady's chamber and tell her, let her paint an inch thick to this favor. She must come. Make her laugh at that. Prithee, Horatio, tell me one thing. Dost thou think Alexander has looked over this fashion in the earth? What's that, my lord? And smelt so. Pa. In so. To what base uses may we return, Horatio? We may not imagination trace the noble dust of Alexander till he find us stopping a bunghole. Even so, my lord. For if you consider the state of prayers in this instead of so. No faith, not a jot, but to follow him thither with modesty enough and likelihood to lead it. As thus, Alexander died. Alexander was buried. Alexander returns to dust. The dust is earth. Of earth we make loam. And why of that loam, whereto he was converted? Might they not stop a beer barrel? 
imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that earth, which kept the world in awe, should patch a wall to expel the winter's flaw. But soft, soft, here comes the queen, the courtiers, who is it they follow? And with such maimed right, this doth betoken the course they follow, did with desperate hand, for do its own might. T'was of some estate. Couch me a while and mark. What ceremony else? That is Laertes, a very noble youth, Mark. What ceremony else? Her obsequies have been as far alive as we have warned thee. Her death was doubtful, and by that great command over slaves the order, she should in ground unsanctified have lodged till the last trumpet. For charitable prayers, shards, flints, and pebbles should be thrown on her. Yet here she is, allowed her virgin pants, her maiden instruments, and the bringing home of bell and burial. Must there no more be done? No more be done. We should profane the service of the dead, to sing a requiem and such rest to her as peace parted souls. Lay her in the earth, and from her fair and unpolluted flesh may violet spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be, when thou liest howling. What? The fair Ophelia? Sweet, sweet, farewell, I hope thou should have been my Hamlet's wife. I thought thy bright bed to have decked sweet maid, and not have stewed thy grave. O oh, trouble woe fall ten times, trouble on that cursed head, whose wicked deed thy most ingenious sense deprived thee of. Hold off the earth a while, till I have caught her once more in mine arms. Now pile your dust upon the quick and dead, till of this flat mountain you have made, to overtop the pavilion o'er the skyish head of blue Olympus. What is he? Whose grief bears such an emphasis? Whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand, like wonder-wounded hearers? This is I, Hamlet the Dane. Thou the prayest not well. The devil take thy soul. I pray thee, take your hands from my throat, for though I have not slain him and rash, yet I have in me something dangerous. With let thy wisdom fear, hold off thy hands. Pluck them asunder. Hamlet, Hamlet! Good, my lord, be quiet, my lord, be quiet. Why, I will fight with him upon the scene until my eyelids will no longer wag. Only so what theme. I loved Ophelia. Forty thousand brothers could not, with all their quantity of love, make up my son. What wilt thou do for her? Oh, he is mad, Laertes. For the love of God, forbear him. Swoons, show me what that will do. Would weep, would fight, would tear thyself, would drink up Isel, eat a crocodile. I'll do it. Dost thou come here to whine? To outface me with weeping in her grave? Be buried quick with her, and so will I. And if thou pray of mountains, let them throw millions of acres upon us, till our ground singeing is paid against the burning stone. Make us the like a wart. Nay, on thou mouth, I'll rant as well as thou. This is mere madness, and this a wild fit will work on him. A not as patient as the female dove, when that her golden copulets are disclosed, and the soul drooping. Hear you, sir, what is the reason that you use me thus? I loved you ever, but it is no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew, and the dog will have his day. I pray thee, good Horatio, wait upon him. Strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. We'll put the matter to the present push. Good Gertrude, set some watch over your son. This grave shall have a living monument. An hour of quiet shortly shall we see. Till then, impatience our proceedings be.